Okay, so in the previous video, we looked at how to configure our I.O. setup for surround mixing, and we created a 5.1 output path and a 5.1 uh, mix bus with a couple of subpaths in there and a 5.1 uh, reverb bus that we're going to use for a reverb send and return effect. Now, as far as routing tracks to these particular 5.1 buses, um, the first thing I'm going to do is look at an actual 5.1 track. So here's a 5.1 track where I actually recorded six channels of information using a DPA 5100 mic. And so to route that to our surround output, we're simply going to go to the output path selector and choose 5.1. So it will then make, you know, it'll route the signal uh, one to one basically to that 5.1 output path. And then we could just listen to our surround uh, content coming directly out of the speakers. Okay, so that's fine. But what about mono and stereo tracks um, and routing those in surround? Okay, so let's scroll down here to the right. And the first thing I'm going to start with is the lead vocal. So you can see I have lead vox one, lead vox two. And I just want these to come out of the center channel um, in the surround configuration. So this is one of the reasons that we create a subpath that goes directly to the C or center channel. So if I select C on here and on the one right next to it, what you'll see is that they don't even have a panner because I've taken this mono track and I've routed it directly to a mono subpath. So there's no panning information. Those lead vocal tracks will just be pinned to the center channel and I don't ever have to think about their panning. Okay, so those are the kinds of reasons that we create subpaths to try to simplify this process. Okay, but then we'll move along to the left here, and let's say we want to go to the background vocals. And I want to actually put those into LCR. The reason is because I'm going to pan those across the front, um, but I don't have any plans to put them into the surrounds, at least not right now. Okay, so I'll take background vocal one and maybe spread that out about 30 pan units to the left, and then I'm going to go LCR with background vocal two, and I may just pan that maybe a little bit off of center. And then I'll go to background vocal three, and I'm gonna pan that about 30 units to the right. And we're fine with these coming out of the center channel as well. So we're gonna hear some L, some C, some R, and that's okay because it'll be complementary with the lead vocal. Okay, so then keep moving along to the left here. I've got some keyboards. For the first keyboard, keys one, I want that to just come out left and right. So rather than deal with a surround panner and have to pan it left and right, I'm just going to say stereo. What's going to happen here is that because it's panned hard left and hard right, there won't be any of this keyboard content in the center channel. And this is one of the ways that you can make extra space for yourself in a surround mix by using all five speakers to position various elements and it doesn't get nearly as crowded as the exact same tune would be in a simple left-right stereo mix. Then I'm going to go to keys too and I'm going to do something different with this. So this guy is actually going to go directly into the surrounds. So I went back in my I.O. setup and actually made an LSRS stereo pair. And now I'm going to come in here and choose LSRS. And that particular keyboard is just going to play into the surround speakers. Now the only drawback to pinning them directly into LSRS is that you don't have the little surround panner where you can see graphically that that's where they're going. You just have to know that the LSRS looks like a normal stereo left and right pan, but it's actually going to the surrounds. Okay, and then that brings us to the acoustic guitar and electric guitars, which again, I'm going to go ahead and put directly into left right stereo so i'll select these three and i will hold option shift on the mac or alt shift on windows and assign those to left uh, to stereo okay then i'm going to pan these around these are doubled so i might actually just go hard left and right on the electrics and hard left and right on the acoustics or you know something like that now you could have also accomplished that with mono subpaths, but to me it just starts to get a little bit cluttered um, when you're looking at a list with so many subpaths in it. Okay, so that brings us to the bass amp and the bass DI. And I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to grab these two and I'm going to put them uh, into 
the LCR. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the output window for each of those and I'm going to drop the divergence down to about 50%. So what that's going to do is it's going to spread this signal across the LCR channels a bit rather than just pinning it directly in the center channel. Okay, um, so 50% divergence, going to spread it out a little. I'm going to come over to this guy, also set this one. I could also just type in here to set it to 50%. So now the bass guitar is going to be essentially pan center, but is going to be spread a little bit across the LCR uh, channels. You know what, let's go ahead and throw a signal generator on there so that I can show you uh, exactly what that effect is doing. So again, I'll open the output window here. I'll throw a signal generator onto that track. Signal generator. Fortunately, it's muted, so you guys don't have to hear it. And you can see if you look at my output metering, if I set the divergence to 100%, then the bass guitar is going to be exclusively in the center channel. And it might compete a little with the vocal there. Um, you know, I really would just want to spread it out a little bit. So you can see as I bring the divergence down, if you watch that master fader meter, you can see what happens and it gets spread around a little bit. If I were to go all the way to zero, then it would actually be spread equally across all of the channels. Okay, so let's bring it back to 50% and you can see that it's mostly in the center, but there's a good amount of information in the left and right channels. It's going to spread it out a little bit. We'll, we'll get a little more width out of the bass guitar. So that's the effect that Divergence has. Okay, so then that brings us to the drums. So I'll start with the kick drum and I'm actually going to do the exact same thing that I just did with the bass guitar. Uh, which kind of makes sense since the kick and the bass guitar really sort of work together in a lot of um, you know rock music and stuff like that. So I'll go to LCR, I'll open up the output window, and I'll set the divergence to, I'll just go ahead and type it again, about 50%. Okay, so then I'm going to go on to the snare, and I'm also going to put the snare into LCR. And I'm going to open the, um, actually I'm going to pan it a little bit to the right maybe. Just a few degrees out to the right. And I'm also going to set its divergence to be about 50%. Then I'm going to go to my toms and I'm just going to pan these hard left to right. So I will um, select LCR for the low tom. And then I'm going to pan that one all the way to the right. I'm going to go to the mid tom and leave that pan center, but I'm going to reduce the um, divergence a little bit, uh, maybe down to about 80% or so. So you get the idea here that when a lot of things, when I pan them center, I want to uh, reduce that divergence amount. Um, so that they get spread a little bit across LCR rather than being just directly in the center channel. Uh, then my high tom, I'm going to go ahead and also put that into LCR. And I'm going to pan that one hard left. Now the hi-hat, I'm also going to do into LCR. And I'm going to pan that a little bit to the left. So it's sort of drummer's perspective here is what I'm going for. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, set the divergence pretty low on that one, like 50% or so. And then with the ride, I'm going to go ahead and pan that um, a bit to the right. So we'll go LCR. Um, I'll go a little wider than the snare, um, like maybe about, eh, let's do 30. And I'll give that a tiny bit of a divergence reduction, like maybe down to about 70% or so. Okay, so that brings us to the drum overheads. Now with the overheads, I'm going to go ahead and put those into the 5.1 output. So this is really the only time here that we're seeing something um, with the actual surround panners, which I'll talk more about in a bit. I'm going to go ahead and pull them back a little bit in the surround panner. So like maybe yeah, somewhere around here. One last thing we're going to look at is using the reverb send and return. You can see I've already got an auxiliary input set here with a surround revive on it. You can pop that open and you can see. Um, if you look at the metering, you usually can tell 
whether it's surround or stereo or whatever. That's a sign on the track. I'm going to set the output to 5.1 and I'm going to set the input to our reverb 5.1 bus. Okay, then I'm going to go to just a couple of tracks here. I'm not going to use this on a bunch of tracks right now. Uh, I'm going to go to my lead vocals. I'm going to go to the first send here and I'm going to set it to reverb 5.1. I'll leave that pan the way it is and then just copy it over to the other lead vocal. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and option drag this over to all of my background vocal tracks. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to set them to follow main pan FMP so that they'll get the same panning into the reverb that they have in the normal uh, LCR mix. And then I'll go ahead and expand those single send views to show us that full surround panner. And for now, I'll go ahead and just set these all to unity gain and we'll play with them later. And just to show you that it's actually working, I'll go ahead and throw a signal generator on here. And you can see that the send is functioning and you can also see the way that that particular reverb algorithm is resulting in reverberated vocal in most of the channels of the 5.1 output. So we're really letting the reverb do the work here of adding some surround spatialization to the mono vocal track. Okay, so that's about it for track routing in surround. In the next video, we'll take a deeper look at the functionality of the surround panners in Pro Tools.